While talking with Daisy and Good Neighbor, she tells you a little bit about when she was a little girl. Got any work? I do, actually. Super mutants have taken over the old Boston Public Library. I got a lot of fond memories of that place from when I was a girl and human. You get those lumbering brutes out of there, I'll pay you 200 caps. What's a super mutant? They're big, green, and destroy or kill anything they come across. Except other super mutants. That's why I'm putting up the money. What do you say? I don't think that's enough money to cover clearing out a whole building. You got a good point. We'll make it, uh, 250 caps. You got a deal, Daisy. Thanks. Hey, while you're there, could you return this book for me? It's from the library. Don't even ask how long it's been overdue. The two of you have so much in common, you're both over 200 years old. The least you could do is return an overdue book for her. When you make it to the Boston Library, you have two choices of entry. You can go down to Copley Station and then enter from the bottom, or you can enter through the main door. Now, the main door is locked. However, you can talk to a robot on the intercom. The library is currently closed. Why is the library closed? The library is experiencing some... Technical difficulties. Please check our hotline for more details. Matter of fact, I do have an appointment. Made it 200 years ago, asshole. I'm sorry, but there are no appointments scheduled for today. Please call and book an appointment for a later date. Thank you. I work here. Let me in. Please provide your six-digit employee ID number. Yes, right. My ID number is, um, one, two, three, four, five... Six? Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Please enjoy your that? visit. Too fucking Mind easy. the mess. We are currently undergoing maintenance. Inside, we find half a dozen or so Protectrons walking around. If you tried to enter without passing the speech test, these would all be hostile to you. And so would the many turrets in the Boston Library. But if you pass the speech check, these robots are neutral. If you've specced into hacking, you can hack up to three of these robots to follow you around. I suggest you do because there will be some heavy fighting later on. The layout of the Boston Library is one big circle with a courtyard in the the center. The first room has the book return terminal. If you've watched any of my other videos in the past, you've seen me talk about collecting overdue books and saving the book return tokens for this book return terminal. This is the only terminal that has something on it of value. It has a copy of the Massachusetts Surgical Journal, which is the only way to get this particular volume. It costs 50 book return tokens to get this volume. If you've been following around with my other lore videos, you should have more than enough by now. As we continue onward, the place is suspiciously dead. We find a lot of skeletons all over the place and plenty of overdue books. You can get close to getting the 50 overdue book return tokens you need to get the journal simply from looting the overdue books in the Boston Library. Additionally, you can get three extra overdue books in a Pulowski Preservation Shelter just outside the Boston Library. If you go straight, one of the first rooms on the right has a collapsed floor that leads downstairs. This takes us to the nearby courtyard, which we'll explore in a moment, so let's continue around. We certainly see signs of a struggle. In addition to the skeletons that are over 200 years old, we do find more recent super mutant bodies all over the place. At the end of the hallway, if you turn left, the a new hallway opens up into a large stairway that leads downstairs. This stairway leads down to Copley Station. We'll head here after we finish exploring the Boston Library. On this platform, we find a lot of ammo boxes and a terminal that you can use to hack into some of the Protectrons if you're not specced into hacking. This is a great use for the Protectron override software that you got from Watts Electronics. In the room directly across from the stairway that leads down to Copley Station, we find a door on the left-hand side that leads down into the courtyard. Now, there isn't anything interesting here, but it is beautiful. You can look up and see the stars through the skylight. Coming back up and around the corner, we find our first fresh corpse. This is Dalen, but we don't have a story on him just yet. His story is on the nearby Curator Givens terminal. There's a locked suitcase near the terminal, as well as a keychain. The terminal tells us the story of Curator Given and his adventures at the Boston Library across four log entries spanning three months. We learn that Given is a lover of information and has appointed himself to be the Curator of Information here at the Boston Library. 
he has put together a team of like-minded individuals, including Dalen, whose corpse we found earlier, and someone else named Shelby, to go to the Boston Library and collect as much information as possible, scanning the books and recording them on archives. Curator Given is worried that all of this pre-war information will be lost if he allows the Boston Library to be overrun by raiders, ghouls, and super mutants. He's working hard to scan all this information in a digital format to preserve it for humanity. But we learn that this comes at a cost. By the time he writes his first log entry, he has already lost a lot of members of his team. Most of the rest of his team then abandoned him in the Boston Library, leaving only Dalen and Shelby. On June 18th, they lost Shelby to a super mutant attack. Only Dalen and Given are left. And then by August 5th, Given tells us that he can't repair the robots anymore. By August, the super mutants are attacking the Boston Library every single day. And Given admits that it's only a matter of time before the super mutants completely wipe them out. He then addresses you, the sole survivor. He says, if anyone is reading this after I'm gone, please do the right thing. Help us protect the information stored on these computers in the data room. He mentions the key that we find on the desk, which opens up the door to the back, and says that there are some supplies inside, which you may find useful. But as soon as we exit the terminal, we hear an announcement over the PA system. Attention! Security breach near rear entrance. Visitors and employees are Intruders have entered from the back entrance. As soon as we round the corner, three to four super mutants attack us, giving our Protectron followers quite a bit of work. But they don't stop coming. Running down the hallway and exiting this room towards the entrance, we find another swarm of super mutants. Once they are finally dispatched, we can go all the way to the entrance of Copley Station to find one of the largest fights in any encounter in Fallout 4. Upwards of 20 super mutants have stormed Boston Library from Copley Station, scrambling up the stairs to kill you. This was a really satisfying experience because typically Bethesda's idea of a tough fight is maybe one or two ghouls and a glowing one, but this is truly a tough fight. This is 20 or so super mutants. The only thing is I noticed after they were dead, they were all armed with melee weapons or pipe weapons, but I know that sometimes super mutants in the wild will carry laser weapons. So it's possible that Bethesda made this a little less hard just because there are so many super mutants that attack you. Once the fight is finally over, you can go back towards Dolan's corpse to use the key to open up the doors to the data room. Inside the data room, sadly, we do find the corpse of Curator Given. Strangely enough, he is naked, wearing leather armor, but no under armor, which seems strange. In the back of the data room, we find the intelligence bobblehead, which grants us plus one intelligence permanently. And in a small walk-in closet, closet off to the right, we find a huge stash of gear. Weapons, ammunition, grenades, mines, and a huge storage trunk filled with loot. Strangely enough, the one thing we don't find is a computer with information on it. Remember, Curator Given begged us to help protect the information stored on the computer. He and his team have been scanning all of these pre-war books for months. We should find a computer in this room, but we don't. This really confused me in my first playthrough. I expected something here and I wanted to help save all this information, but there was no terminal in this room. But there is. It's just hidden. If you happen to be wearing a jetpack, use some chems to slow down time and then jump through the skylight in the roof. Once you clip through the skylight, push forward until you reach the edge of the building, then drop down as if you're gonna drop out of the world. As you fall, you see a terminal begin to fly by. If you're quick, you can press E to access the terminal. This terminal gives you an option to compress data to holodisk, yes or no. If you choose yes, you gain around 200 experience, and you get a new miscellaneous inventory item called the BPL Compressed Data Holodisc. Presumably, this holodisc contains all of the information Curator Given and his team has scanned from the Boston Public Library over the many months that they were here. You now hold an entire library's worth of knowledge on one holotape. You can only do this once. If you try and access the terminal again, it'll say that the data has already been compressed. Now, as you leave, you immediately start to fall out of the world. So before you do, hit your jetpack and press backwards. This will clip you back through the wall and allow you to stand on terra firma. So this is very confusing. This terminal 
makes the entire encounter complete. It makes a lot of sense. Even the way it is, simply compressing the data and giving you experience is far better than having no terminal at all. I admit that the terminal with the compressed data seems like it's not enough for an encounter like this. If we just got all of the information kept at the Boston Public Library, you'd think that there would be more to it than that. Like maybe the Brotherhood would want access to it and you could do more with this holotape. Maybe Bethesda never figured out where this quest was going, so they kind of cut the final stage of it out of the Boston Library by just pushing the terminal beyond the bounds of the room. But I think that having this terminal there at least finishes the Boston Public Library so that you can fulfill Curator Given's final wish. At any rate, I don't know if it's cut content or if it was simply misplaced, but that is where you find the terminal to compress the data. And with that, you're done. You could go ahead and attack the Protectrons and the turrets if you want to, which will of course turn them hostile, but you'll get more experience and more loot that way at the expense of ammunition, or you can head on out. You can leave through the front door, or you can go down through Copley Station. The door leads you to an underground subway station with two wrecked subway cars on two different tracks. We find a slew of skeletons here and a few containers. The most notable is a duffel bag filled with 44 pre-war money. You can find a hidden room by going through one of the subway cars and then walking down the track until the other subway car bends forward. This reveals a subway car that's cut in half. Inside we find the corpses, two fresh corpses of settlers. You can walk through the door in this car, which leads to a room that looks like it was their home or their camp. We find a workbench, some storage, a few sleeping bags, and that's about it. There's not any ammunition or other loot back here. Heading back out, you can go up the stairs to exit Copley Station, and this will put you back on the road just outside the Boston Public Library. And with that, head back to Daisy and Good Neighbor, and she is all smiles. You're back. How'd it go at the library? Let's just say those mutants have a new appreciation for the Dewey Decimal System. Boom. Filed them under the history section, huh? Ooh, there's some poor librarian out there that's gonna haunt me for that pun. Okay, jokes aside, you did good. Warms this creaky heart a little to know that library is a bit more peaceful. And that is the full story of the Boston Public Library in Fallout 4. It's a fun encounter, probably much more difficult at lower levels, where you get to kill a whole lot of super mutants. I'm sad that Curator Given's story was cut, that last terminal, but I'm glad that you can still access it, exploiting a glitch in Skylights. What did you think of the Boston Public Library? Do you have any horror stories of when you came here at lower levels? levels trying to fight off all of the Protectrons, turrets, and super mutants at once? Let me know in the comments section below. I read all of your comments and I use them as inspiration for my future videos. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video today. Thanks for watching from the bottom of my heart, and I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning with a brand new video.